In this video, I am going to discuss the poem Ode to Autumn written by John Keats. Now, I will discuss, I will analyze and interpret each and every sentence of this poem. So, stay with us and try to understand the meaning of the poem and go through or observe the notes and explanations. So, let's start. Ode to Autumn, written by John Keats. Season of mists and mellow fruitfulness. The phrase season of mist. Here, the poet is speaking about autumn season and Autumn is the season when mists gather on open grounds and it becomes wet, the places become wet in the mornings and evenings and mellow fruitfulness, mellow means ripe, fruitfulness means full of fruits, ripening of fruits grow in large number in autumn and close bosom friend close bosom friend of maturing sun close bosom friend refers to the very intimate or personal friend and the phrase maturing sun it refers to the idea that the sun ripens the fruits. Actually, the fruits are ripened by the sun. So, the poet is telling us about the season of autumn and he says that it is the warm sun rays which ripen the fruits. And here, next line, Conspiring with him how to load and bless. Now, conspiring means agreeing or entering into a plot. Actually, conspiring means entering into a plot with a evil purpose. Now, here the word is used in a good sense. Simply, uh, it means agreeing. So, conspiring with him how to load and bless. How to load and bless. How to load and bless with fruit the vines. How to bless or make happy the vine creepers. And to load them with clusters of grapes. Here, actually, uh, the creeper or the tree is blessed when uh, it bears the fruits. And vine is the creeper that bears grapes. The thatched caves. The thatched, sorry, with fruit the vines that round the thatch eaves run. Thatch eaves. Eaves are actually the projecting lower edges of the roof. The cottages in the villages are thatch covered and the vine creeper grows along the eaves of those thatches. And that word thatch, it refers to the roofing of straw or rushes. Now, to bend with apples the most cottage trees. The apple trees which are growing in the orchard by the cottage and they are covered with moss. Most cottage trees, they are covered with moss. Apple trees are often covered with moss because a kind of greenish small plant grow, uh, uh, is found growing on moist surface. To bend with apples the most cottage trees and fill all fruit with ripeness to the core. 
here fill all fruit make all the fruits ripe through and through make all the fruits ripe to the core means to the last to the fine to make so many apples grow on the trees and to the every center to the core means to each and every center to swell the gourd and plump the hazel cells to make plump or fat the gourd means a kind of green egg shaped large vegetable the gourd is a vegetable and like the pumpkins and in india actually we have uh, loki like this uh, fruit now to swell the gourd and plump the hazel cells plump means make plump make swell kids has used actually the adjective here as a verb and plump the hazel cells means hazel nuts have cells and the cells swell out when the inside of the nut is ready so it suggests that the hazel nuts swell and and uh, it becomes it come it tries to come out outside with a sweet kernel kernel is the soft part within the hard shell of a nut with a sweet kernel kernel actually refers to the soft part within the nut and with the sweet kernel to set budding more to set budding more and still more later flowers for the bees budding means growing in the form of buds growing in the form of buds later flowers means flowers which bloom late in the season of autumn for the bees means bees are flying on the flowers and they collect honey from them so until the bees think until the bees get the impression that the warm weather will continue forever and they will always have flowers to gather honey okay so until they think warm days will never cease for summer has over brimmed their clammy cells the bees actually find that the summer days will continue and the when winter actually comes the flowers do not bloom so they do not get honey and now it is time for their to uh, gather honey because it is going to be a time of summer so this is the first danger so and in this first danger the poet speaks about the warm days of summer and summer uh, warm in the warm days of summer they are filled with over brimmed with has the over brimmed over brimmed means filled with clammy clammy means sticky or wet and here the clammy or sticky cells suggest the cells full of honey and the honey is sticky and wet so the long and the warm summer days the bees will collect honey and their cells of hives will be filled with the honey collected by them so this is the stanza first and in stanza first the poet speaks about the bounty of autumn autumn is the season of mists and also of the ripening fruit and here the sun ripens the fruits sun sun rays help to ripen the fruit autumn and the sun work together to ripen the fruits and the winds round uh, running round the edges of the branches of the apple trees are bent nearly to the ground with their weight of apples hazel nuts are filled with sweet kernel and certain varieties of flowers also bloom in autumn the bees suck sweetness their honey and they make honey from it and they fill their hives by gathering the sweet Uh, honey from the flowers so this is the first stanza of the poem now we will go through the second stanza who hath not seen thee opt amid thy store 
Amid thy store means in the midst of your plenty or abundance. Sometimes whoever seek abroad may find. Autumn is actually the season of plenty. And here anyone can see the embodiment of the spirit of autumn in the midst of the ripening crops and the fruits of the season. And that's why the speaker says, Who hath not seen thee opt amid thy store? Store refers to the store refers to the wealth of ripened crops and the fruits. Who hath not seen thee opt amid thy store? Sometimes whoever seeks abroad may find. Abroad means outside, in the open. Whoever seeks abroad means whoever goes out to seek the spirit of autumn in the open country and he will find thee sitting careless on a granary floor. Thee sitting, thee sitting, thee means you. Sitting careless means careless because this winner here, a winner has been spoken about. And winner is referred to his here thee. And an winner has no fear for the future and he knows that much corn has been gathered, thrashed and winnowed already. And the sitting careless on and that's why he is sitting careless on the granary floor. On the granary floor, thy hair soft lifted by the winnowing wind. Soft lifted means an unusual compound word where kids as uh, means lifted softly or gently and the winnowing wind means to winnow is to free grain from the chaff from the dart by fanning it with large hand fans and granary means storehouse for grain sorry grain so next line thy hair winnowing wind or on a heap ripped furrow sound asleep Drowsed with the fume of poppies while they hook. Or on half ripped furrow sound asleep. A furrow is actually a narrow trench that the plough makes in the soil. Corn is planted in the furrows and the furrow has been only half ripped by the reaper when he feels tired and lies down to rest. And drowsed means made drowsy, made sleepy. And the fume of poppies here refers to the smell of the poppy flowers and the poppy is red or the scarlet flower from the seeds of which opium is actually made. So the poppy is associated with the sleep. So then in a, uh, then or in a half ripped furrow sound asleep, drowsed with the fume of poppies while they hook, hook means carved cutting instrument with which corn is ripped spares the next swath and all its twined flowers. The next swath means the next row of corn. All its twined flowers, flowers which are twining or coiling round the corn, that is growing intertwisted in the corn. And poppy flower grow in this manner in the wheat fields. And spares the next swath, spares the next swath and all its twined flowers, it uh, it suggests that the reaper was about to cut down this row of corn when he felt very sleepy. When he felt very sleepy. And sometimes like a gleaner thou dost keep steady thy laden head across a brook. Gleaner means a man or woman who gathers ears of corn left by the reapers. So gleaner collects the gr uh, grain collect the grain cut by another reaper and like a cleaner means taking the form of a gleaner thy laden head your head burdened with the load of the corn because gleaner is carrying it away and thou dost thou dost keep thou dost keep steady thy laden head you keep your head steady or erect or straight and keep steady uh, across a brook as you are crossing a brook brook means river or a stream when you are crossing when 
the gleaner is crossing a brook or stream with a load of corn ah uh, he uh, doesn't stumble and he walks steadily or by the cedar press press or by cider press with patient look thou watched the last oozing hours by hours a kind of drink made out of apple juice this is cider cider is apple juice it's drink and now cider press a press or the pressing instrument in which ripe apples are pressed so that the juice comes out and with the patient look means patiently without any worry or anxiety the last oozing the last drop that comes out slowly and the ooze means to pass slowly through the pores hours by hours for hours together this is happening and you are watching the last oozing hours by hours so this is the second stage and here the poet describes the occupations of autumn autumn is here as uh, is personified as three persons winner gleaner and uh, the final uh, we find that the person who is actually oozing the cedar or the apple juice we knowing ripping gleaning and cedar pressing these operations have been mentioned actually autumn is seen here as a omen first autumn is seen as a omen doing the work of winnowing winnowing means separating the chaff from the grains if anyone wants to see autumn he may go into the fields and he will see omen engaged in the winnowing operation while the bridge ruffles the locks of their hair and this is one picture of autumn and secondly you can we can see a gleaner who will carry out all the grains cut downs by the reaper a gleaner is a woman who collects grains from the field when the crops has been removed and he may walk along steadily with the weight of grains upon the head while crossing a stream and that sight of a gleaner is symbolic of autumn and also in the final section in the of the stanza autumn may be seen in the figure of a woman who is crushing the ripe apples in the wooden press to obtain their juice from which cedar is to be made so this woman sits by the cedar press and watches patiently the apple juice flowing out of the press drop by drop so the sight of the cedar press is also associated with the autumn here so autumn is here seen in different guises and these are related to the occupations of the season now we will go to the last stanza in the third stanza what has the poet spoken we will see where are the songs of spring some people may long for the sweet songs of the spring in autumn the songs of springs are the music of many birds and insects who are happy at the advent of the season which for many of them is the mating season ai where are they ai means yes where are they so where are those beauties think not of them thou hast thy music too the poet asks autumn not to worry about the song of the spring because you have your own music while bird clouds bloom the soft dying day bird clouds has bird clouds means clouds lying in the long bars or clouds with the stripes or streaks like bars actually in the evening cloud seems to be resting in the evening sky and glow in the light of the setting sun shop dying day the day that is dying gently the delight that is slowly fading from the sky it suggests the setting of the sun actually it suggests that the light is dimming gradually touch the stubble plains while bird clouds bloom the soft dying day and touch the stubble plains with rosy hue stubble means stumps of grains or straw left by the reapers after corn or straw has been gathered and stubble plains means newly cut meadow and here touch the rosy hue the glowing clouds in the sky cast a ruddy glow on the stubble plains 
Rosy hue means actually a red color or color of the rose. So, while bar clouds with rosy here, this refers to the sunset time in the evening. And uh, this uh, suggests uh, that songs of the springs are generally heard in the morning when the birds wake up and sing and the song of the autumn are heard in the evening. So the poet is uh, giving emphasis on the evening time. And next line, then in a well-full choir, the small nuts mourn among the river sallows born aloft. Well-full means mournful. If the wailing or lamenting loudly, choir means boys singing together as in the church. And here it refers to the chorus. Nuts, G-N-A-T-S, nuts means a kind of small insects which are found flying in the thick clusters in mercy places in the evening. The small guts mourn means small nuts like small uh, insects. They are producing a mournful kind of music, a sand kind of music. And the river swallows means the willow trees, a kind of drooping plant with long leaves which grow by rivers. Born aloft, it suggests, carries high. Sinking means coming. Leaves or dies, blows or sings. Born aloft. Okay, the line is uh, born aloft. Uh, it suggests here, in this line actually uh, suggests that the nuts are tiny insects and they are easily carried high by the light breeze and they come down and the breeze doesn't blow any longer. When the and as the nuts float in the bridge, their tiny wings vibrate rapidly and the wailful kind of sound is produced. So the nuts produce this sound mostly in autumn when cold weather is about to come because it is, win uh, sorry, it is the evening time. Or among the river swallows born aloft or sinking as the light wind leaps or dies and full grown lambs loud bleat from the hilly born. Full grown lambs means lambs which are not small, hence they bleat loudly and they bleat loudly. Here the uh, bleat of the lamb is spoken about and hedge cricket sing. So the cricket sounds is also heard from the hedge, from the small bushes. Uh, and now with the treble soft, treble soft means high pitched voice, treble is the highest female of the boy's voice, so treble cannot be soft or gentle. And the red breast, treble soft, the red breast whistles from a garden crop, red breast is a small singing bird. It is called so, the poet is calling so, because it has a reddish hatch on its breast. And a garden crop may a piece of land enclosed for a garden. And swallows, this is also a uh, kind of fast moving bird which migrates to warmer countries at the approach of winter. So the red breast whistles from a garden cropped and gathering swallows twitter in the skies. Means swallows which build their nest in the different places in summer, they gather and they twitter. And their twittering sound, their chirping sound uh, fills the air. And it suggests that the winter is coming. So this is the sign of the winter that the poet is also speaking about. So this is the third stanza. And in the third stanza, the poet describes the sounds of autumn. Spring is distinguished by the sweet songs of the birds in the morning. And here the poet is speaking about the song in the evening. Autumn has its own peculiar music. When the sun is setting a soft glow, a soft sound of a, uh, a wailful, a mournful sound is created. Melancholy buzzings of the sound has been created by the nuts. And the nuts fly about among the shrubs glowing on the riverside. And in addition to the nuts singing of a melancholy chorus, the bleating of the lambs, also enrich the music of autumn and then there is a chirping of the grasshopper next come the high and the delicate song of the twittering of the swallows which are gathering together in a large number for their winter migration 
So the nuts mourn by the river, the lambs bleat on the hill, the grasshopper sings from the hedge, the red breast whistles from the garden, and the swallows twitter in the sky. And this is the descriptions of the glorious music of autumn. So in this way, John Keats has glorified the season of autumn in his poem, Ode to Autumn. I think our interpretations will have a great inspirations or great effect on you. And if you like our video, please subscribe our channel, comment, like and share our videos. Thank you.